Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Parks Fly Shop's fly tying video for January 18th, 2010. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a pair of midges, um, subsurface midges. This first one I'm doing here is a WD-40, which in my opinion is about the best nymph you can use on the Yellowstone River this time of year. Uh, and it stays very good until oh, early April. Uh, it's, a, it's a good midge imitation. It's also a fair imitation of a betis mayfly. And I think that explains much of its effectiveness. Now the first thing I'm going to do here, without laying a thread base, I'm going to cut off about 10 barbs from a wood duck flank feather. Secure those at the, what will wind up being the back end of my thorax. And then carefully overwrap those down the bend of the hook. And the reason I don't lay a thread base on this fly, or really a lot of my midges, I like to keep the, uh, the abdomens very slim, and so I try to keep my thread layers to a minimum. I'm going to wrap that pretty well down the bend and then again try to make touching turns back up to the tie-in point. It's okay if it's a little uneven. Okay, next step is to get some gray dry fly dubbing. Uh, this is just a standard synthetic dry fly dub, doesn't matter which brand you use and dub that on there very tightly. I don't want a buggy thorax on this fly. I want it to be very smooth. And go ahead and wrap that. Notice I did not clip the butt ends from my tail. That's going to form my wing case. And I should probably note this is ADOT Dark Olive Uni. The hook is in a size 18 Montana Fly Company short shank uh, heavy wire scud hook and uh, you can tie this fly from 16 down to 22, maybe 24 even. Now I'm gonna, I left my butt ends free here. I'm gonna pull those over the top of the wing case. Make one turn of thread, two turns of thread, then pull those back and make two turns of thread in front. And that's going to help um, kind of create a Chinese finger cuff arrangement to keep that wing case from pulling out when you, after you clip it. I think we've all been fishing and had a, a nymph where the wing case fell apart after one strike on it because it wasn't tied in this way. And there is a completed WD-40. Okay, the second fly I'm going to be tying today is a bug we call a red haze serendipity. And it's tied with a body material that is really taking off. It's called, uh, well this brand is called Life Flex. There's uh, a variety of other brands called Wonder Wrap, um, Super Floss, a variety of different brand names to it. And what, it, what they all are is a spandex uh, rubber leg style material. And as you can see it's elastic. Um, you know there's a lot of things that'll, body materials that it will stretch but won't come back like the uh, various D-rib, stuff like that. And this stuff has much the same effect except it's elastic and so that makes it easier to work with, much more durable. Um, you can do a lot more with it. And as you can see it's a little bit it's a little bit translucent. You can see kind of the shape of the hook through that material. And it's very durable, uh, pretty easy to work with, really effective. And we're calling everything we tie with this material a something haze because the first fly that we used uh, tied with this material was called a purple haze, which is a, a tractor dry fly. And so the first thing I've done here is I secured that material with a couple tight turns at the head and then I pulled it tighter and tighter as I wrapped down the shank there. And what that did was establish a very slight body taper from front to back. and. Uh, you should be able to see now, you can see a little bit more of the hook shank underneath the material I've tied in so far. So secure that down, well down the bend, and then uh, bring the thread back to the front. Next step, notice I'm wrapping this with a little bit of tension on it. That's going to keep it uh, tight on the body and make it much harder for the fish's teeth to get in there and tear it up. This is, what I think, one of the big things that makes it more durable is, since it's wrapped so tightly, it's just really hard for teeth or rocks or anything to get sort of purchase on it. Um, one of the flies we did really well on last fall was a purple haze cripple and I'll, I'll certainly be doing a video of that fly. And 
first time I tied some of them, I tied it on my client's line at about 11 o'clock in the morning. And we didn't take it off until we got to the boat ramp at the end of the day, same fly. And uh, caught, probably caught 25, 30 fish on it. And while you could certainly see that the fly had been used, it wasn't torn up. It was per perfectly usable um, the next day. And that's, that's very rare. You catch 20 or 30 fish on a fly, especially out of a boat where you're hitting it against twigs and stuff on the bank. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so the wing on this fly is, uh, I'm using Widow's Web, but you can use any crinkly white synthetic you like. You could also use deer hair. The precise material doesn't matter at all. This is, I should say, this is ADOT Red Uni uh, thread, and then uh, again the same heavy wire scud hook. I'm going to tie that in with several turns, and then pull the other side over and wrap over that. That's going to make the fly more durable. I'm going to trim that pretty short, about a third of the body length. I uh, just want a little tuft there. In fact, that's actually a little bit too long, so I'm going to give that another little trim. Final step, wood finish. Actually, I lied. That's not the final, final step. This is one fly where I, I like to use super glue as head cement on this fly. And the reason for that is I think it creates a shinier head. And a lot of midges have kind of a shiny head on them. A little dab of that there. And you can tie this fly in a wide range of colors. It's also effective in black and chartreuse. Um, you can tie it in a variety of sizes as well, up to about a 14. The red ones we usually do in 18 to 20. Um, that's, that's because it more closely imitates the midges. You could also do it in a slightly larger size and it would, it would look more like an aquatic worm, sort of a San Juan worm replacement. Uh, but there is a red haze serendipity and the second of two really effective midge patterns this time of year on the Yellowstone River, really anywhere in southwest Montana. Uh, I'm off today and tomorrow, and I'll certainly be using these flies either this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon. As always, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know.